Oh no! No! What is this? No! Uh... Hello fellow simmers, it's Samuel Beeman of BLS here and welcome back to another Open Rails video for a Saturday night live premiere. So, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I've actually been dreading doing this video because uh, the sounds on this DMU are just so crap. Like, they just, they, they're just terrible. Basically this, uh, don't get me wrong, the model's nice, like the modelling of the, the DMU's nice, but the sounds are just recycled from the Kuju Kia 31, which you get with the, ah, uh, that Japan island route thing that you get with default MSTS. So yeah, so the sounds are just horrendous on this. So, just bear that in mind, guys. But obviously we're going to be looking at the Yorkshire Coast Railway route uh, once again. So this was a UKTS CD release. So it's a very, very rare uh, piece of kit to get hold of now. Very, very rare add-on. So it's nice to have it and it's nice to look at it. And today we're going to be heading down towards Whitby via the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, which is quite fitting for us here at British Locomotive Studios, considering that we actually made the MYMR or was involved in the update to the MYMR for TS Classic. So it's going to be an interesting one. So without further ado, I think we should unpause the game and take a little look at the briefing of this scenario. So you start in the bay platform at Ridlington, awaiting passengers from two connecting services due shortly. Your departure time is 15.07. The bay starter signal will clear as, soon as, you, uh, as you depart from the platform. Trust me. Uh, this is a straightforward run to Whitby, calling all stations, due to arrive at 16.13. You will see plenty of AI traffic on the way. Enjoy. Funnily enough, we actually uh, are seeing a rat pass through the station right now. Hellfire. It's uh, 25244. Well, that has just stopped dead for some reason, which is uh, interesting. But yeah, here is our unit. Uh, the cab is... <sighs> I mean, it's completely wrong for a start. This is like a Kia 31 reskin cab, as it were. It's weird though, because you can change the cab view. So if you press the right hand side arrow, it changes the cab to a DMU cab, as seen here, which is more correct. But obviously, if you, and then if you go right, it just turns it over to the other side. It's a really bizarre and weird cab, to be honest with you. But there you go. So the 25 is just leaving now on um, by the looks of it some mineral wagons and a brake van pretty cool are they mineral wagons? yes I imagine they probably are on wind cutters but yeah let's have a little look around the model shall we so this model I believe is made by Mark Thompson who has actually donated a few items for our UKTS content area on British Locomotive Studios. He also helped us out with the North Yorkshire Moors Railway route add-on for TS Classic by donating some of his fantastic reskins to come with the route package. And yeah, you know what? He's done a really nice job on the Craven. It is not that bad considering. I mean, obviously this is old technology. It's MSTS, so obviously this for its time. Uh, was probably the best thing ever, but obviously if you look at it nowadays it can be seen as slightly outdated compared to some of the newer modern stuff that we're uh, obviously used to. So I think we should put our headlights on, so if we put it on full, uh, bright, although for some reason they're coming up as markers, like red markers, I don't know why that is, so perhaps we should keep them off uh, for that purpose. Uh, I believe this does have a passenger view, it does indeed, which is uh, quite nice, you've got the sort of front forward view of, okay you can't go that far, uh, forward view sort of cab view kind of, well, driver's eye view of the line as in a sense when you're obviously right up to the front of the DMU, which is what a lot of people like. So we've still got four minutes until our boarding completes. 
Uh, as we can see here, we've got a 31 coming in the distance. So there's plenty of action to look at while we wait, which is good to see. Look at that, it's on a tanker train. My lords. Oh, it's halted at a signal for now. Obviously waiting for another service. Oh, look at this! Oh, that's a Northern Transpennine unit. Look at that, it's a 127. My lords. Cool, isn't it? Look at that. Trans Pennine unit. Well, thirty one's on its way. Oh, got another rat arriving. It's 24. Although I don't know why the 31 sounds like a GP38. That's a bit bizarre. 24 as well, look. Hellfire. Okay, so we're in the cab now. Should be able to get... Oh, okay, we've still got two minutes, man. Taking a little while to... Oh yeah, listen to that rat. On a free coacher. Yeah? It's 24010, that one. It's quite a nice scenario, this. So you actually get to do a little bit of train spotting while um, while you're waiting for your guard's whistle for departure. So while we're waiting, let's have a little look around the area, shall we? So this is uh, Rid Rillington. And, you know, okay, it's a bit bland in the distance, but obviously, you know, in MSTS days, you wouldn't really go, like, far away from the track. But, you know, for its time, this was probably the best thing that you would ever get in the means of um, detail and routes. Uh, mind you, saying that, I have seen, like, better detailed routes for MSTS out there than this. But, obviously it depends on the release date of each add-on when it was released. But, yeah, look, we've got a nice crossing over here as well. A good shed. Very nice to see. Oh, crossing's going again. Something, something's on its way. Something's on its way. Oh, it's another Trans Pennine unit, my lords. Plenty of AI traffic going on here. This is brilliant to see. But we are about to get the off, so I need to be in my unit. Okay to proceed. Okay to proceed. Okay, so off we go. Release our brake. Stick ourselves into forward. Okay, so I'm just gonna put just just gonna put this out there, guys. This is the first time I'm actually driving the 
105 properly. I've had a brief look at it, but I haven't actually driven it properly before. So this is the first. Okay, so now we've got the uh, into forward gear and everything. I'm going to do a quick toot on the horn, which is absolutely terrible. And uh, off we go. Gear one. Actually, does it work, like, realistically? So, obviously I'm 0% throttle. Put ourselves into gear one. And rev up. Yep, it's working. Look at that. Gear two. I say it's a shame it sounds terrible, really, but hey ho. Oh dear. Oh, oh. What are those sounds? So it's one of these trains that have the constant back brake release sound going on. So unfortunately you do get trains like this within open rails where the brake just keeps like constantly releasing. Oh look, I press shift F4 and it's made my um, signal sharp on my HUD. So that's brilliant on the track monitor system. Yeah, somebody told me how to do that in the comments. Very kind of you. Thank you for that. But yeah, um, it, it's one of those units slash locomotives that have the constant brake release sound playing, which is really, really annoying. And it only seems to happen on vacuum brake locos, which I don't get why it does it. Oh, this sounds dreadful. It really does. It doesn't even have a two-tone horn. It's just that one-tone constant noise. I mean, to be fair, I'm, I'm out of the cab now because it's just horrendous. <laughs> you can tell I don't like this, uh, this, the sounds of this. But the unit itself, the model-wise, is okay. Oh, we've got a bit of a flickery field over there. Slightly bland scenery around this area, but, you know... ourselves into the control one view so I can um, operate the unit better from the cab. arriving at Mersh's Road at 15.12 which we're not doing too bad in the means of time at the moment so let's just make sure we do get there in time. Oh there's a tree on the track. Oh dear that's not good is it? I wonder if there's a way of getting rid of that. Okay so the engine revs rev down when you put the gears to zero. That's not very realistic. I think I can see this 
station coming up now. We are one minute late, but it's not too bad. This is a really nice station actually. The models are looking really quite nice. Marish's Road. I'm liking the photo texturing weathering on the wagons there, that's quite cool. Flowers on the platform. A bit too deified, but at least they're there. Okay to proceed. Okay, so we haven't really got long to sort of look round here, so but I mean it's not really too much else to see because it's sort of in the middle of the countryside, so one of those little small country stations. Here we go. Oh, what is that brake sound? It's so annoying. Piss, piss, piss. Let me know in the comments guys if you like the look of this route and what was your favourite Microsoft Train Simulator add-on for its time. But like what was your favourite one? And let me know in the comments because I'd be really interested. And if you have any MSPS add-ons that you'd like to sell, uh, let me know because I might be interested in buying some. So I do enjoy my look backs of the old classic era in train simulation. The next station is Pickering, which is the headquarters of the North York Moors Railway at obviously today. So this particular route is sort of based in sort of the 1950s to 1960s era. Sort of steam and diesel era. So it's quite interesting to see like what the North York Moors Railway was like back in the day.
Look at the blimps moving as well. Very cool. Well, we've got a green radio. Crossing over now, I would assume, is where the little supermarket area is today. So yeah, so it's really interesting to see this. Class 08 there in the siding. We are late by a couple of minutes, but, you know, we are, it's normal. So look, this is a crossing over the main road which heads up to the high street of Pickering, which obviously today isn't there. Class 31, we have GP38 sound. Yeah, look at this. Pickering with its overall roof. So let's have a little look around Pickering while we're here. So, okay, well, that's. Hmm, I'm not sure about that because it's got a door there and technically signs in the way, but hey ho. But yeah, this, to be honest, uh, okay, we've got some roads sort of clipping into the ground there, which is a bit debatable, but you know, oh, look, we've got cars and, you know, traffic. You know what, it's not that bad. You, you can see it is Pickering, you can tell it is. I, I would have thought that this would have gone straight up to the high street from here though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought it would have curved around here and then just curved back round up here. That just doesn't really make any sense, but hey ho. Yeah, look, we've got the church up on the hill as well, of Pickering. Obviously, it's not going to be as much detail up here because, you know, you wouldn't fly over here realistically in MSTS days. But yeah, it is recognisable, and obviously down there where the goods yard and that is now is where the little supermarket is and car park. So yeah, so it, it you know it looked very very different back in the day. Okay to proceed. Okay to proceed. There's our guy with the smooth voice he has. So let's release our brake and get underway to our next scheduled stop at Levisham. Oh wait, it would help if I 
put myself into forward gear, wouldn't it? Got 37 in the side in there with a high intensity headlight. Um, I must admit, I do like the models of the 37 and 31, obviously, and it has the high intensity light and everything. The high intensity headlight technically didn't come into play until like the 1980s. And if this is based on like the 60s and 70s, which I assume is the time period that it's based in, or even earlier, that's technically inaccurate. So that lowers the level of realism in you know the accuracy department. North Yorkshire Moors was double track. I mean, I didn't actually know this. So it's been singled today because obviously it's a single track Heritage Railway today. Sidings and engine sheds today. New bridge. So there is a bit of a gradient here simulated, which is good to see. You can see we are increasing speed quite rapidly. Because there is actually a bit of a gradient here in real life, so I'll give them credit for having that. I'm liking the use of telegraph poles beside the line, that's uh, a really nice feature and also we've got uh, animals such as that cow beside us and a sheep. Which adds to the detail. I know technically I'm not driving this 100% realistically but that's because there is, to be fair, simulation wise there is pretty much no realism on this unit. Right. There is definitely like better units out there for MSTS and open rails that you can drive than this one. Uh, this one has the complete incorrect, well, incorrect cab, incorrect sound, and I'd say the only thing that really is good about it is the model. That's pretty much it. I mean, the detail here, scenery-wise, though, is pretty, pretty all right. I mean, it's pretty bland and barren. Uh, there be some more bushes, I would say. But then you are in the moors, and it is quite barren. It is quite very. Um, oh, what's the word? very wild, it's, it's natural habitat basically.
quite a tight curve around there. Must have been, but yeah. Bit tight, bit too tight. Especially going to this speed, 40 mile an hour. DMU fresh. Technically it's Kia 31 fresh, but you know. the house with a crossing, well usually there's a crossing there. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be, I mean the scenery is okay, but it's not the best, to be honest. But I think that this was a beta, I believe this was like unfinished, there was a few more bits that needed to be done to it. Because obviously it depends what version of York, Yorkshire Coast route this is. Obviously I just picked it up and I don't know what version of Yorkshire Coast this is, but it's obviously a uh, work in progress, incomplete version still. It is pretty basic, to say the least. I mean, this cab is basically a, a reskinned Kia 31 cab. Oh, that's that house with the crossing, sorry. My bad. And to be fair, that the detail on this isn't too bad. That's done quite well. So yeah, so you get to some areas which the scenery looks pretty good. Obviously you get to others where it's a bit like, yeah, yeah, underdeveloped, shall we say. On the approach to Levisham now, we can see the uh, platform coming up on our track monitor system, which is indicated by them two blue rectangles either side of the green lines. Apparently the max speed of this unit is 75 miles per hour. I'm not sure if that's accurate for a class 105 Craven unit, but it does sound about right, to be fair. This is quite recognisable, you can see Levisham coming up in the distance. Although for some reason we don't have any line side fencing anymore, the line side fencing has mysteriously disappeared. I would have thought you would still have some fencing here. So we've got some here, just randomly. 
popping up. So, I've noticed as you approach key locations on this route, the scenery is pretty much there and uh, done to a reasonable extent, you know, done to a reasonable effort. But obviously in between the main locations, it does get a bit bland here and there, which is a shame and kind of lets the route down. But key locations, they're done pretty well. I'll give them credit for it. Another 105 approaching Lipsham. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, the platforms here look a bit thin. Uh, I don't think they're this thin in real life, but then again, they could have changed, like... I don't know. But yeah, they do look a bit thin here. There we go, we're at Levisham now. So we'll just have a brief look round Levisham. We've got the uh, little hut there, side-ins. Okay, those are not in period. They're like um, 1980s wagons there. So there is some stuff on this route which is out of period to the time period modelled. Which okay, can be quite questionable. But yeah, no, mm, scenery wise, again, especially looking over here, incredibly bland. There could definitely be some more work done here. Uh, but we have got some fencing coming up over here, but yeah, as I say, you know, some areas are very much bland. So what I'll do is, before we depart, is I'm just going to have a look at the author of this route and uh, find out who the author is. Because I actually didn't mention it at the beginning of the video. So let's just take a look quickly. Okay, so the author of this route is John Kendrick, and it was made in 2005. And this is just the Yorkshire Coast Railway. It doesn't tell me what specific version of the route that this is. But it's just Yorkshire Coast Railway by John Kendrick, uh, copyright 2005. So, the route itself was built in 2005, which is a fairly long time ago now. Steady. Off we go. So it has got a sort of gear changing simulated here. But it's not perfect. So there's definitely uh, better units that you can drive within MSPS compared to this. Next station is Gofland. Oh, okay, there's a bit of a texture glitch up the top here. Look at this. What's this all about? Okay. Interesting. Okay, we're going to crash straight through it. Oh no! No! What is this? No! Oh! Uh. <laughs> 
yeah, not very realistic. giant like wall in the way of our uh, route for hey ho this is looking quite nice up here the foresty sort of areas up, up above on the uh, moorland up there I'm liking the difference in texture colours as well uh, that is pretty realistic for the moors which is what we try to replicate in our version in TS Classic I like how it's a lot quieter on the outside of the unit than it is on the inside that's, um, that's interesting because you know again not technically realistic because I mean, I don't know, obviously in the cab, you've technically got a really loud atmosphere in the cab, but in in DMUs, not really. It's usually louder outside the cab than it is in it. We've got a good six miles to go for them. Fair old way, yeah. Oh, that brake hiss, man. Okay, to developers of open rails who are watching this, please fix that. It's so annoying. The literally constant brake hissing sound on vacuum brake locos and units within the game. It, it, it is a bug that needs fixing. It doesn't do it on the air brake locomotives and rolling stock. It only happens on back brake locos and rolling stock. So please fix it. It is so annoying, the constant hissing sound. The way that I've kind of got around it for some of the locos and units is I literally just mute the sound. I delete the sound and, well, replace it with a muted sound. Just so it stops that constant hiss. But, yeah. It, it is very, very annoying. I can see they've, they've, they've sort of tried to model a river, but they've sort of textured it on the ground, which, well, yeah. Uh, debatable. As I say, some areas of scenery on this route are pretty alright, whereas others can be seen as pretty bland. So it kind of suffers the same sort of category as the Brighton to Portsmouth route that we've seen previously. Dale Holt, because if that's the case then I believe that's slightly inaccurate as well because I don't think Newton Dale Holt was even a thing back in the sort of 60s, 50s. I think that was only like put in when the line was a heritage railway. Could be wrong though. If anyone does know sort of history on that, let me know in the comments. Oh, 
Oh, we've got missing line side fencing again. It randomly disappeared. And we've got bland scenery once again. And a tree. Ugh. I can tell this route was not finished. This DLC wasn't finished. Once again guys, if you are enjoying my open rail series of looking back at the old retro train simulators, uh, obviously let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos on open rails, let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. And also if you've got any other video ideas that you think I should do for the future, let me know. I'm always open for feedback and ideas, recommendations and such. We have actually recently released our first piece of Open Rails DLC for British Open Rail Studios and that is actually a horns and whistle patch for the Neen Valley Railway add-on which I looked at previously. You know how I said that I was going to patch the horns and whistles to have the correct pitch? Well that is now done and you can download this via the British Open Rail Studios website which is linked in the description of the video. audio that just kicks in. Heard a bit of a wind there. Rushing through the map the valleys and more. Oh, that brake kiss is so irritating. Please stop it. Of course, what I have noticed that I've actually got a digi digital clock inside this cab. Now, you wouldn't have a digital clock in a 1970s BMW. So it's technically inaccurate. And it's also reading 3 a.m. in the morning. So it's technically quarter to four in the morning the dial in the cab. It's technically wrong as it is actually quarter to four in the afternoon in game time.
one, presumably on freight, get the tankers. So, ignoring the fact that the unit sounds rubbish, the scenario itself is actually pretty fun. Uh, there's lots to see, uh, plenty of AI to look at. Obviously, at the beginning of this scenario, it's pretty much like a train spotting session for like 10 minutes, which I quite enjoyed. You can see the many sort of locomotives and rolling stock that ran on the Yorkshire Coast Railway. But what do I think of the route overall? Well, it has potential. Uh, I like how the key locations are very well detailed. And obviously, you've got, they've got that sort of area pretty well. But I just, no, it kind of suffers with the same issues that Brian Portsmouth West Coastway Express route had, where it just looked very bland in places, a bit too bland. We are approaching Gothland, which I do hope they've got this. I was going to say I do hope they got this correct and like, you know, well done because obviously this is a pretty famous station with it being featured in Harry Potter, etc. But it doesn't even have a bloody footbridge. That's very disappointing. And the station building looks, to be honest, doesn't look quite right. Stop could have been a little bit better on that one, but I didn't overshoot. Um, yeah, uh, okay, so a little bit disappointing, Gofland. Uh, the fact it doesn't have the iconic footbridge, which I think is a very important part of Gothland, that red footbridge and yeah um, I don't know whether this was a later addition to the station and that's why it's not been modelled but I don't know I have okay, this feeling that it should be there let me know in the comments guys what you think to Gothland and, and, and if, if you think it is correct for the 50s, 60s era because uh, for me it I don't know, I'm not too sure on it. I mean, I could be wrong. You know, the footbridge might not have been there at this time period, but... Hmm. It's, a, it's an interesting one. It's a difficult one to really... Uh, in analyse, in a sense, because I haven't really done my research on the Norfolk Moors before back in the day. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt, but I think there should be a footbridge there. Next station is Gromont, which is in three miles. Should be all downhill for this. Going down the infamous Gromont Bank. Power down here, it should be fine down this hill. Yeah, see, we don't need any. 
any uh, power. Oh, that brake sound. So annoying. Okay, we got another texture glitch up ahead, ladies and gents. It's not so good. Not quite sure about these texture glitches. I don't know why they are occurring. I don't know if these were a thing in Microsoft Train Simulator days or not. Um, let me know in the comments, guys, if you own this route for MSTS and you drove this route for MSTS. Let me know if you had any issues with uh, textures spiking in the air like that. Could it just be an open rails fault? Who knows? But yeah, that is kind of annoying. That sucks. It's a shame. So we're sort of passing by Beck Hole now. Seen down below us. Around these bits, not too bad. Oh, look, there's another track down there. Yeah, because originally there was actually a railway down this direction as well, and there is actually remains of this railway in real life. Like you can literally walk and see the old bridges and stuff. So it is interesting to see this uh, this railway track actually modelled and visible in this version of the route. Yeah, for those who don't know, there is actually a, um, you can actually walk along that old branch line uh, today on railway walks. It's worth looking at. So we are slowing up because there is a 25 mile an hour limit down here. Probably due to this weak bridge or something. Yeah, you can see it down there, look, that line is actually a footpath now, and you can walk along it. We've got a bit of floaty track here. Uh, ever so slightly floaty ballast going on there, but there you go. Oh, look, look underneath the model. Oh, there's no floor, I know. But yet, there's floor up above. That's strange. So, rightfully, right now, we should be sort of going through. Gromont Motive Power Depot. It's not actually here. So, am I going to hazard a guess that it didn't exist back in these days? Which I, I guess that, that that could be possible. We've got another 
class 31 ahead of us in Bromont Station. A flickering track going on here. There it is, number 31. Let me guess, on freight? Yes. It seems that 31s are primarily on freight around here. And obviously, you've got the units like me who do the uh, passenger duties. Although, this platform here at Gromont looks a bit too short, to be fair, I would put it longer than this. Here we are, Gromont. Um, so yes, we've got the mainline platform. Well, this would be mainline platform in real life, but it's obviously I think it's a cattle dock in this, this one. Oh, oh there's another platform over here. Yes, the Gromont does look very different. Look at it. Uh, it is very, very different. Um, but yeah, I do think the platforms are slightly too... They're, de they're definitely too short. Because they definitely ha house m longer trains than this in real life. So, yeah. But okay to proceed. You got sort of the well. These are usually shops. No, these aren't houses usually. Um, and also, oh, they don't have the pub on the corner. That must be an original. But yeah, no. This, this, so I take it this is supposed to be the pub, but it's not really modelled very well. Um, yes, yeah, so this this goes. See, I don't understand this because it, this goes on a walk through here to get to the motor power depot at Gromont. But obviously if it doesn't exist, then why would you have that? And look, there's no tunnel mouth over this side either. It just sort of leads to nowhere, so why would, they, why would it be there? Yeah, so there is um, certainly some mysteries about this route. It's, it's quite hit and miss. It, it's got a very uh, strange variety of stock um, some of it being out of period but yeah it's 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 an interesting one to say the least Yeah, guys, let me know in the comments if you think that this route is periodically accurate, you know, like period that's modelled you know, for the 50s, 60s, because I don't think it is, personally, but I could be wrong. So our next station is Slates, and then after that it will be Rust Walk, and after Rust Walk we should be heading to our final location of Whitby Town. So this is interesting to look at this because this is actually the area of the North York North Railway that we haven't yet modelled in train sim. So it will be interesting to see it in this sort of viewpoint in MSTS. over there look okay didn't really know that was a thing but I wonder what that is now I wonder if you can still see where that was or is oh, so it's not I don't think it's there in real life anymore I don't recall it being on there when I traveled down the Whitby line on the 25 Wagons 
there in a, in a shed. Uh, they're technically the wrong period wagons again. They said rail freight on them when rail freight didn't actually exist in the 60s, 70s. There's a lot of bridges along here as well. I seem to remember there was a few bridges along here, but whether them being that long, I don't know, because these are very long bridges. I don't recall them being extremely long like this. Certainly not like this many being this long in length. again. It's okay. I've seen better. some houses, well, little bits and pieces in the distance, but... Quite a relaxing little trickle of water there. <laughs> to be fair, I would like to have heard this route have more of ambient sounds as well, because, you know, you'd hear like sheep and stuff, that's quite regular around the moors. There's not really many sheep about either, I've noticed, and yeah, ambient sounds, there's not really much of that going on. Oh, we've got a 37 coming up by the looks of it. Hellfire. So, round this corner should be slates. I believe there's a bridge over here in real life. Yeah, there is. It's like a bridge, like a road going over, but it's not modelled here. I'm not sure if it was a thing back then. Here we are at Slates, which, again, you know, as I say, key locations, detail-wise, pretty good. You can see here, you know, looking at this viewpoint, you can get some quite good screenshots, like so. But, you know, it's... Okay to proceed. 
it's just very bland in places and I know I keep saying that uh, but it is the truth of the matter although this bridge over here looks quite nice like a girder bridge I don't recall it being there in real life though but I might have to research into that okay so we've got trickling of water but as I say you know it's got pretty much ambient audio going on let's it down as well Come on, signal that. Need to make sure that you get that crossing sorted. Looks quite nice coming out of here, I must admit. Got the houses on top of the hill over there. Yeah, the scenery here is not too bad. Back in 2005, this would have been probably one of the most realistic train simulations ever. But you look at it now, and you think, hmm, yes, you know. Technology has come so far. I mean, you think, 2005, two years later, Rail Simulator came out. And that was revolutionary. Literally revolutionary. Because it was unlike anything that we'd ever seen before. And then it was followed by Trains in World much later on, but with Trains in World I didn't get as much of a buzz with as I did when Rail Simulator came out. I remember Rail Simulator coming out and thinking, wow, this is the next step in technology. But with Trains in World, I just, I just didn't get that as much. I think it's because it was such a massive difference compared to this to, you know, to like the Rail Simulator. So here we are approaching Rust Wharf. Lovely station in real life, to be fair. Really, really nice station. And this is the thing, it's, it's very, very difficult to model this. Um, especially in TS Classic, it's something that we're going to really struggle at modeling. It's, it's getting the custom assets, you see. The custom assets are the main bugbearer of modeling uh, the rest of the North Hillmore Railway route within Trains and Classic. So you've got to bear with us guys. Uh, for now we're working on other projects such as the Peak Rail and Spa Valley Railway for Trains in Classic. So the Whitby section is kind of taking a back burner for now. But when we do resume the project and get on with it, it'll be good in the long run. Some nice uh, church bells going on there from Russ Wop Church. But yeah, no, this is actually quite nice. With the White Heart in there. Uh, water texture's a bit naff, but you know, fair play to trying to model this because it is a very difficult area to model. Okay, to proceed. Uh, what's this? Okay, there's a building under the water. Maybe this should be over here or something, or you know, I don't know, I don't know why that's in there. But oh, there's another building in the water. It seems to be 
floods going on here. And a road going into the... Okay, yeah, something's not quite right here. Hmm. A few glitches here and there. I mean, look, we've got water over here into somebody's garden as well. There's obviously been a lot of rain in this area recently. <laughs> but yeah. Right, onwards to Whitby. Viaduct here, which does hold a track. There is actually a track up there in this uh, version, of this, uh, obviously of the route. Um, obviously, if you go to it these days, I believe there is no railway left, or well, there's no railway no more up there. Wonder if there's any train going across it this period. No, not at the moment. But yeah, there is a railway up there. As you can see, it's coming back down beside us. So we are currently on the approach to Whitby Town now. You can see the abbey in the distance on the hill. So, this was obviously covered in our previous look at this route. Uh, if you are interested in looking at my sort of brief look at this route, doing the coastal run with a class 24 I shall link it in the description of the video so you can go and take a look uh, it will also pop up at the end of this video as well with the subscribe button but yeah then um, Whitby's okay uh, again it is very bland I mean the the actual town itself that you can see is all just like photo textured buildings which lets it down. We do have a nice ambient audio of seagulls though which kind of gives it a bit of atmosphere but with the lack of scenery around here it really does kind of spoil it. I do love the sound of seagulls though, it gives you that sort of happy feel that you're at the seaside. Ah, oh, passing an 08 with GP38 sounds, it's uh, brilliant. So yeah, so some of the locomotives, rolling stock and units that come with this route are uh, not the best. Uh, I mean, the models themselves don't look. I mean, they don't look terrible, but there are better stuff available out there. But one of the main letdowns is the sounds of some of the locos and rolling stock that just add on. Compared to others, it's not as good. So we're going to uh, pull up to the buffers, and that should end our session. So here we are, a last port of call at uh, Whitby Station. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our uh, tail lights on there, just you know, to resemble that we've stopped and we've finished our service. Let's take a brief look around Whitby. Look, we've got some boats down there, and 
but would be Abbey on the Hill. So yeah, so it's not it is not the best. Uh, there's there's a station building missing. There's no station building or anything. There's pretty much zero detail on the platforms at Whitby itself. And yeah, there's very little detail. Um, there, don't get me wrong, there is some nice little bits here and there, but uh, it's 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 not the best. It's not the best. So yeah, guys. So this is going to end our video of the Yorkshire Coast Railway for now. Uh, I do hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this. Uh, it is quite a rare add-on now. As I say, you can't get hold of this. You can't buy this anymore anywhere. Uh, because obviously UKTS is now closed down. And they don't do any CD ordering or any CD sales. So, let me know in the comments what you think to this. Um, and let me know if there's any other MSTS Open Rails add-ons that you would like to see in the future. For my Open Rails retro series. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. This has been Samuel Beeman of BLS and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye for now.